Good day, good day everyone. Once again we are back together and we are still looking at calculus and this time we are going to be looking at uh, cubic functions. Uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome and obviously we want you to subscribe and stay on this channel, okay? We'll be your best plug when it comes to maths and science education, right? My name is Mlungi Singosi. And of course, uh, I want to make sure that uh, you are part of the family. And of course, um, you can also hit that notification bell, right? Just to make sure that you are alerted every time that we are posting a new lesson. And of course, if you need assistance with mathematics or physical science, uh, we've got our lessons that we run uh, on a daily basis in mathematics or physical science. And you can just uh, hit us up on info at mlungisimkosi.co.za. All right, so let's have a quick chat about cubic functions and I want us to look at some examples, all right? Um, so essentially, when we talk about cubic functions, usually the standard equation um, is as follows. So we've got f of x is equal to ax cubed uh, plus bx squared plus cx plus d. All right, now let's first establish just a few things about our cubic graphs. So the first thing that we always notice is that, well, when the value of a, meaning the coefficient of x cubed, is greater than zero. Now, it will affect the shape of our graph, okay? So how would our, our graph look like? So our graph would usually start with a local maximum and therefore uh, follow a local minimum. So what you'd see is that our graph would uh, actually start as an increasing function, okay, get to that maximum point there, all right, and then obviously have a minimum, okay? And of course, when the value of A is less than zero, um, our graph would be shaped more or less in this way, okay? So you'd start, in this case, with a decreasing function, uh, that starts with the local minimum and thereafter a maximum, okay? Right, now here's a couple of things that I want us to actually uh, just know about a cubic function. And please, I want you to remember this, uh, you know, for, for calculus. Right, now how do you first of all determine? Now, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things here. How do you determine or how do you find the local maximum? In fact, let's start with the very basic things. Of course, we know, just like we did for any other function, to find the y-intercept, okay? So we always say x is equal to zero, okay? So obviously, it means everywhere you see x, you are going to substitute a uh, zero, all right, and that gives you your y-intercept. So if you've got your graph uh, in this case, uh, you know, or, or rather the equation of your graph in this manner, then it means the constant term, this d term, uh, actually gives you your, your y-intercept, okay? Right, and then obviously we do know how to get the x-intercept as well. So the second thing is the x-intercept. Uh, of course, we do know at the x-intercept, we know that x, or rather y, rather is equal to zero. So we know that y is equal to zero, zero. So you're going to take your equation, equate it to zero, and of course, you are going to, uh, um, you know, uh, factorize, okay? And of course, uh, that's why in our previous lesson, we, we taught you about synthetic division, uh, in this case, um, so that you are able to get those factors, right? Okay, and uh, number three, so now we want to know how to get the turning points. So how do we get the turning points? So how do we get a local minimum and maximum? Um, uh, and of course, we're going to add some vocabulary to it. Okay, you hear me talking about local min minimum and maximum. Uh, in this case, all we simply do, Remember that uh, when we, what happens at your, uh, you know, your maximum point or your minimum point? Well, this is where the gradient is essentially equal to zero. Now, let me just show you quickly about this, the shape of this graph. If I look at this graph over here, you can see that the gradient uh, here is actually positive, right? 
but it keeps decreasing until it gets to that point there where it becomes zero. And then what happens? Your gradient now starts becoming negative there. Uh, and in this case, until it becomes zero over there. So you know, every time at your turning point, it means that this is where our gradient, and how do we get the gradient? We, we take f prime x, f dash x, the derivative, and we make that equal to zero. So we know at the turning point, we make the gradient equal to zero, okay? Um, and the derivative rather equal to zero. And how do we find the y value of the uh, turning point? Um, uh, so in this case, we'll just sub substitute the x value back into the equation, okay? Right, now, um, so we know this is, this is how we get our turning point, okay? Uh, so the x value of your turning point and of course your y value of your turning point, you'll take whatever value uh, of x, let me say x turning point, and you're going to substitute it back into your original equation. All right, so we know that the derivative equal to zero gives us our turning point or our maximum and minimum values, right? And then number four, Right, now please, I want you to listen carefully on this one. We call it a point of inflection, okay? So the, call it the point of inflection. I'm going to explain just now. Um, so the inflection point, this is what differentiates your graph from being uh, what we call a concave up shape and a concave down. Now at the point of inflection, we say that, well, the, you take the derivative of the derivative. So it means that at the point of inflection, you take the double derivative and you make it equal to zero, okay? And the x value that you get there is what we call the point of inflection. Now, suppose we say, okay, we get the point of inflection and that is your point of inflection, right? So it means before the point of inflection, your graph, uh, let me talk about this one in particular where a is greater than zero. It means that our graph is a, uh, in this case, it's going to be a, a concave down shape. Can you see? So it's almost like, uh, you know, that blue color. So it shows you that it's a concave down shape, right? So after the point of inflection, then what happens is that it becomes a concave up shape. So what uh, uh, differentiates between the two points um, or the two uh, parts of your graph where it becomes concave up and concave down, that is your point of inflection, all right? And of course, uh, even on this graph over here, okay, if we get the point of inflection, so here it starts by being a concave up and, and a co uh, concave down. Now, just a couple of things uh, for you to remember, okay? So now we know that uh, to get the point of inflection, we say, well, this is where the double derivative is great, I mean, is equal to zero. But what does it mean when the point of inflection, let's say you get the point of, at the, you know, at particular point, uh, of in, uh, a particular point, you take the double derivative what does it mean when you say, well, the double derivative, you get it to be greater than zero, right? So all it simply means when the double derivative is greater than zero, it means in this case, you are dealing with a minimum, a local minimum, okay? Uh, um, so you are dealing with a concave uh, up shape, but where the double derivative is less than zero, uh, please just remember this, okay? So in that case, you are, uh, where it's less than zero, you are dealing with a, um, that, that concave down uh, shape in that case. So uh, it means that you are, you would be looking at a maximum, okay? Uh, between those points, right? And we're going to apply this when it comes to graphs, okay? Um, uh, in this case, uh, just another thing uh, to just remember is that uh, remember when we are talking about the point of inflection, okay? We said this is where the graph, uh, we differentiate between the, 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 the different points 
all right, where you've got a local maximum and a minimum or where you've got a concave up, okay, shape and a concave down, all right. Uh, and in this case, um, right, going right back to your derivative, uh, remember, when you are talking about the derivative, now I want you to just stay a little bit on this one. When we're talking about the derivative, you are talking simply about, uh, in this case, the gradient of the graph. Now, I want to just quickly take an example, okay? Uh, if I draw a graph that looks like that, okay, let's just take a, a shape. All right, now, there's a difference between f of x, okay? Let's say what is the difference between f of 4 and f dash of 4, right? So this is the y value at x is equal to 4. Now, look at this. If I were to say this is at x is equal to 4, right? Now, what happens? I would find there is my y value where x is equal to 4. So here, if I say that value is 4, the y, the corresponding y value is f at 4. So in this case, you'd say this is 4 and f at 4, right? But when you say f dash at 4, now I'm going to indicate this in a green color, right? You are simply saying what is the gradient, all right, where x is equal to 4, right? f dash at 4. So you'll see that that gradient over there is negative, okay? Right, now there's a difference. Uh, in this case, the y value, okay, you, you'd find that your y value is also negative there, but your gradient is negative. But let's say you take another point, okay, and I'm deliberately going to pick a point here. Uh, right, so let's say we pick a point uh, over there. Let's just say, just for argument's sake, it's where x is equal to 7. Now, in this particular case, you can see once again, if I pick a point there, once again, you'll see that your f of 7 is a positive value. But also, look at that. Your gradient at this point is also a positive. You know the right-hand tick, right? So your gradient is also 7 uh, in this part. I mean, uh, your, your gradient is also positive. Okay, but look at uh, where I get, um, you know, I'm going to make this uh, at this particular point, okay? So what happens? Your gradient is positive, but your x value, I mean your y, your corresponding y value at that point would be a negative value. It's on the uh, negative uh, um, uh, axes, right? Uh, y uh, uh, values. Right, now in this particular case, you must be able to tell the distinction between the gradient, okay? Now notice this. Uh, if I were to talk about the gradient, here, okay, let me just indicate it. So in this particular case, your gradient is positive, 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 positive until it becomes zero over that point. Then look at this. Your gradient therefore becomes negative, 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 negative until it becomes zero at that point, right? And then it starts increasing again. It starts becoming positive. But look at your y values, right? I'm going to indicate them in green. They are negative, negative, negative. And when you get over that point, okay, let me just indicate them in, in white so they become positive thereafter. So you must be able to make a distinction between when we're talking about the y values as well as when we are talking about, uh, in this particular case, the the gradient of the graph okay i think we've done enough talking all right let's get into an example of how we are going to apply this all right let's take our very first example all right so they say sketch the curve of f of x is equal to minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4 and we're going to indicate all our intercepts on the axes as well as the stationary points now uh, talking about uh, that word stationary points. So in this case, our 
uh, turning points or uh, minimum and maximum values are also called stationary points. Please remember that, right? Uh, and they say uh, also indicate the point of inflection if there is any, right? Now, let's first of all start with what we usually do, just the normal stuff. So let's find the x-intercept. So we're going to say, well, what happens at the x-intercept? Um, oh, first of all, before we even get to the x-intercept, what are we expecting when it comes to this graph? Okay. We're expecting because the value of A in this particular case is less than zero. So I'm expecting a graph ultimately that would look uh, like this. Okay. So the shape of the graph should look more or less uh, like that shape over there. All right. So we're going to start with our X intercept. Okay. So we said what happens at the x-intercept, we know this is where y is simply equal to zero. Okay, so remember, so then we take a minus x cubed, okay, uh, plus 3x squared uh, minus 4, and we know this is equal to zero. Now, remember what we said, ladies and gents, in our previous uh, uh, videos. How do we factorize a cubic function? Or all we simply do in this case, we're going to look at uh, for one of the factors, right? So uh, let's see. Uh, so what can we substitute, first of all, into f of x? In fact, I should have actually uh, just put f of x there, um, which is equal to negative x cubed. Okay, and all of that. So now let's substitute, let's say, first of all, f of um, 1. Let's see if that works. So that's going to be minus 1. So everywhere I see x uh, cubed rather uh, plus 3 times 1 squared minus 4. Let's see if that gives us 0. Okay, so that's going to give us minus 1 uh, plus 3 minus 4. Uh, and definitely that does not give us 0. Okay, so we end up with actually minus 2 in that case, right? So that doesn't work. So let's try f of minus 1. Okay, so remember we said you try 1, then minus 1. You try 2, then minus 2 until you get a value that will give you 0. So I'm going to say, well, that's minus a negative 1. So where I see x, I'm going to put negative 1, okay, plus 3 times negative 1 squared uh, minus 4. And let's see what that gives us. So I've got uh, minus a negative 1. So that becomes a positive 1 because that's, got, that's going to be minus a negative 1 plus a negative 1 squared is uh, 1. So that's going to be plus 3 minus 4. And in this case, uh, if I look at this, negative times a negative will give me a positive. So that will be 1 plus 3 minus 4, and definitely that gives me 0, okay? So now I've got one of my factors, okay? So one of my factors is actually x plus, uh, x plus 1, yes, correct. So this is going to now say, well, it means that minus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. But we already know that uh, x plus 1 is, is, is a factor. But uh, you know what I'll do? Uh, it'll, in fact, let me do this. Uh, let me just multiply everything by a negative in this case so that I have negative times negative, that will be x cubed minus 3x plus 4. So when I multiply by negative, it changes sign. Remember, negative 1 times 0 would still give me 0, okay? So I know that x plus 1 is one of the factors. Now let's find the other factors, right? So now, negative 1 multiplied by what will give me x cubed? That will give me x squared, okay? 
And let's go to the last one. Negative 1 multiplied by what will give me positive 4? Uh, 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 or rather, 1 multiplied by what will give me 4? That will be uh, plus 4 there. Okay, so that I get that last term. But in this case, oh, I left a square there. Sorry about that. Okay, so now I need to find the middle term uh, over here, right? So I will say, well, in this case, what will I do? Well, negative 1 times x squared will give me positive x squared, right? Okay, let me just remove this so that it's not confusing. Okay, so let me do that in the yellow, in fact. So negative 1 times x squared will give me x squared, x squared, right? But I want to have 3x squared ultimately, right? So in this case, x multiplied by what? Okay, uh, um, in this case, uh, I want to have ultimately the result should be minus 3x squared. So in this case, what do I need uh, to add to the x squared in order to get minus 3x squared? And you'll see that I will actually need minus 4x squared uh, in this case. So minus 4x squared plus x squared will give me 3x squared. Do you agree? So we already have this from that, isn't it? So how do I make minus 4x squared? So x multiplied by what will give me minus 4x squared? And you'll see that that will be uh, minus 4x. So that will be minus 4x so that when I multiply this into that, I get x squared. When I multiply that into that, I get minus 4x squared. And when I add this to that, I get minus 3x squared. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Okay. Right. So I've got my other uh, factor uh, now. Um, so this will be equal to 0. Okay, so that will be equal to 0. And you'll see, so I've got x plus 1 um, into, now if I factorize that, I can see this is going to give us x minus 2 um, squared, right? So this will be x minus 2, x minus 2. So essentially, we know that our x-intercept is x is equal to uh, negative 1 or x is equal to 2. So it means that our x-intercept will be at negative 1 and 0. And, okay, uh, it will also be at 2 and 0. Okay, so those are our, are our x-intercepts. Now let's go to the y-intercept. So we said we'd look for the y-intercept. Remember, we're moving uh, uh, swiftly towards... Uh, getting that graph. So this is where x is equal to 0. And of course, if you've got your equation in standard form, right, remember, uh, we said that constant value there always gives you your y-intercept. Um, so without necessarily uh, going into, okay, so in this case, we say f of 0, this is going to be minus 0 uh, cubed, okay, um, that was, uh, remember, that's uh, um, plus 3 times 0. Okay, so that's plus 3 times 0 squared, and that's minus 4. And you'll see that that gives us simply minus 4. So our y-intercept is where x is equal to 0 and y is negative 4. Okay, now... Um, we're looking for our stationary points or what we call our turning points, right? So how do we get the turning point? Remember that f of x, okay? Okay, let's write down the equation. So that's minus x cubed um, plus 3x squared uh, minus 4, right? Um, so that's our equation. So how do we get the turning point? We said the turning point is where f prime x, which means the derivative is equal to 0. 
So let's find our derivative there. So our derivative, we said jump down, that's minus 3x squared uh, plus 6x, okay? Um, that's a constant, so that will be 0, and so this is equal to 0. So now, let's find our value. If I take out minus 3x as a common factor, so that will be x minus 2, uh, this will be equal to 0. So it means we've got a stationary point where x is equal to 0, or we've got a stationary point where x is equal to 2, okay? And how do I get the y value of my stationary points? All I simply do is to take the x value and uh, uh, substitute it back into the original equation. Please remember that. So remember, I already have f of 0, okay? Right, if you substitute that, it will give you minus 4. So which means 0 and minus 4 is not just a... Um, a y intercept but it is also a turning point okay i hope you can get the uh you know just the picture there okay and then also it means that f of 2 now let's find f of 2 in this case this will simply give us minus uh, 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared uh, minus 4, okay, um, and in fact, I think we had found x, uh, so that's 2 and 0, right? Uh, yeah, it should actually be, so that would be minus 8, uh, plus, in this case, 3 times uh, 2 squared, that's 12, minus 4, and yes, and it does give us uh, 0 there, so in this case, we also have uh, 2 and 0 as a turning point. So in this case, it means that our turning point will be at uh, 0 and minus 4, okay? Uh, but it also means it's going to be, we've got another one, which is at um, 2, where x is equal to 2, and y is 0 as well. All right, so... Uh, uh, of course, uh, we can also find the point of inflection. So I hope you can uh, more or less see the, the shape of the graph. Because remember, uh, the A value was negative in this case. So it would be a graph that actually uh, looks more or less like this. Okay, right. So now, um, our point of inflection. So we said what happens at the point of inflection. Okay, so inflection point... Right, uh, so our inflection point, you'll see that we say this is where the F, um, uh, you know, F double dash of X is equal to zero. So which means I'm taking the derivative of the derivative. Now remember what was, okay, let me start with F of X. F of X was minus X cubed plus three X squared minus four right? But what was f dash x? That was minus 3x squared uh, plus 6x, right? But what's the double derivative in this case? Uh, that's going to be f dash double dash of x, which is going to be minus 6x. And we know that at the inflection point, this is where the double derivative is equal to z uh, zero. And so what does that mean? It means that, uh, again, if I say minus six X is equal to zero, it means dividing both sides by uh, negative six, therefore X would be equal to zero. So it means our inflection point will be at X is equal to zero. And of course, we already know where X is equal to zero, Y is minus four, okay? Right, now, ladies and gents, I think we are almost ready uh, to draw our graph. Okay, so what does our graph look like? Uh, and of course, this will not be an attempt to draw an accurate graph. Uh, it's just to give a picture of what our graph looks like. Okay, 
So we know what the shape should more or less look like. We said we are expecting a shape that looks like this. So first of all, we said our x-intercept, okay? Remember, uh, our x-intercept was at minus 1 and 0, okay? So we know that we're going to cut where x is minus 1 and 0, and we know that we're go also going to cut at 2 and 0, right? So uh, minus 1 and 0. So there's our minus 1 there. So that's our first uh, intercept there. And then uh, we're going to also have at 2. Uh, okay, maybe let's leave a little bit of space there. Uh, so if we said that's 1, maybe 2 would be over there. Okay. Yeah, maybe let me do that in yellow. Um, yeah, let's make that 1 and let's make that 2. Okay. Right. Now, um, now we also did note that uh, in this case, our turning points would be at 0 and minus 4. Okay. So, uh, where x is equal to 0 and y is minus 4. Okay. Let's just say over there. Okay. Right. And then another one would be where x is equal to 2 and 0. Okay, so it means I know this is where I would have a concave up shape and this is where I would have a concave down shape. Okay, so this is where x is 0 and y is negative 4. This is where x is 2 and y is 0. Okay. So um, I think more or less my shape is coming together. All right. So what would the shape of my graph look like? By the way, uh, that also uh, um, coincidentally becomes the y-intercept as well. Okay. So what does the shape of my graph look like? Okay. So, um, oh, and my inflection point, you remember this was at uh, 0. Uh, and we know that um, it's at 0. Uh, sorry, where x is equal to 0, and uh, um, in this case, so uh, we know it's minus 4 as well. Okay, so there we go over there. All right, so that's the shape of our graph. Uh, that's what it looks like. Okay, sorry that it looks a little bit messy because I kept on uh, just going over and over. Uh, the same point. So essentially, that's what our graph would look like. Okay, right. I hope uh, um, this helps, ladies and gents, uh, in terms of, you know, just getting a, a you know, just a, an idea of what our graph would look like. Um, oh, yeah, actually, I realized that I had made a, an, an error when it comes to that inflection point. Uh, in fact, just go back to it. Uh, yeah, I, I see that I actually left something. All right. Yeah. So, yes, it does ha happen that we all make mistakes. All right. You will have minus 6x uh, plus 6 for the inflection point. Yeah, because it didn't actually make sense. All right. So, you'd have minus 6x plus 6 uh, is equal to 0. And so, you would have uh, minus 6x is equal to negative 6. And so, of course, your inflection point will be where x is equal to 1, okay? Uh, you can find out the y value of that inflection point by substituting, uh, I think we already have found where x is equal to 1. You remember when we were looking for one of those um, y, in, uh, I mean, x-intercepts, right? Uh, where x was equal to 1, y was minus 2. Okay, there it is there. Uh, you can substitute back. Okay, so it means we'll have an inflection point somewhere around there where x is 1 and y is minus 2. So this would be our inflection point. So this means our graph before this point here is a concave up shape. And after this point, it would be a concave down shape. Okay, right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. 
and I didn't want to actually have a long lesson, but nonetheless, it is necessary. We have to know how to plot these functions. Let's take one last example and then we call it a day. All right, so let's look at our second example and uh, our last one. So they say the graph below shows the curve of f of x is x cubed uh, plus, or rather minus x squared minus 8x plus 12. They say the curve has an, a y-intercept at 0 and 12. Okay, so it's that value over there. Okay, and they say the turning points at B and 2 and 0. And then they say the point A is an x-intercept. So point A is over there. All right, now uh, they say calculate the coordinates of A. Right, now, um, to get the coordinates of A, what we would need to do is just try to find, obviously, the x-intercept. But I want you to please note, ladies and gents, they said this point here is a turning point. But can you see that it's a turning point, but it is also an intercept, okay? So uh, it is actually turning there, but it's also an intercept. So... What it does uh, uh, is that it actually uh, enables us. Okay, so I'm just going to say, well, f of x, uh, we said this is x cubed minus x squared minus 8x uh, plus 12. Okay, right. So that means, uh, okay, which is equal to zero. Okay, so so that we don't actually, yeah, maybe let's just write it down there. So we've got f of x, which is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. So let's just quickly uh, do that there. So um, you remember... Want uh, the values where x is equal to, uh, or rather f of x is equal to zero, but we already know that x, uh, that turning point at two there, uh, is one of the factors. So I'm just going to say, well, x minus two. So let's get the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, point uh, in this case. So we know this would be. Right, x multiplied by what will give me x cubed, so that will be x squared. And I know for the last one, minus 2 multiplied by what will give me 12, that would be minus 6. Okay, so to get the middle term, so I know I already have minus 2x squared, minus 2x squared, all right? but my final result is minus x squared. So what do I need? I need in yellow, I need a, a, um, a plus x squared so that minus 2x squared plus x squared will give me that minus x squared there, right? So um, I need to create this minus x squared. So question is, x in the yellow multiplied by what will give me x squared and the answer is quite simple that will be plus x okay so um that will be plus x over there so this will be plus x and this will be equal to zero now let's factorize the rest of our uh, quadratic function or equation rather, uh, right? So you've got x minus 2, right? If I factorize this here, this will be x plus uh, 3 and x minus 2, okay? Right, so you can see those are the same there and that's that turning point uh, as well as the x-intercept. So it means that the point A would be x is equal to minus 3, right? And the other one, uh, remember, x is equal to 2. We already have that. They, already, they had already given that to us. Okay, so in this case, it means that A 
would be minus 3 and 0. Okay, so if we go to that graph there, it means that's minus 3 and 0. Those are the coordinates of that point A there. Right, and then they are looking for the coordinates of B. And remember, what did they say about B? They said B is actually one of the turning points, all right? Um, yeah, they said uh, the turning point is at B. So how do we get the turning point? Remember, we said to get the turning point, you simply take the derivative and make it equal to zero, okay? So now, remember our f of x was uh, x cubed uh, minus x squared, okay, minus 8x plus 12. So this simply means f prime x, uh, okay, f prime x, okay, we are taking the derivative. This is going to be 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 and this is equal to zero, right? Now, uh, of course, uh, this is where you're going to factorize. Okay, so we are looking for factors of three. That's easy. That's three and one. Okay, we're looking for factors of eight. Okay, such that when we subtract them, they give us negative two. So factors of eight, let's try four and two. Okay, um, let's see. If I cross multiply that, uh, 3 times 2 is 6, uh, 1 times 4 is 4, and of course 6 minus 4 will give me 2. So it means this is my first bracket, and this will be my second bracket, okay? Right? Um, oh, gosh. Okay, so this will be, we said, okay, so that will be uh, x and 2. And that will be 3x and um, 4, okay, is equal to 0. Okay, so in this case, remember my, uh, you know, the bigger product must take the sign of the middle term. So my bigger product in this case would be 6x, 2 times 3x is, CX, is 6x. And in this case, uh, I've got 4x with that one. So, which means that 6x has to be negative. So that's negative and that's positive over there. All right. Now, uh, so which means this is at x is equal to 2. Uh, or this would be 3x plus 4 is equal to 0 and uh, 3x is equal to negative 4, and therefore x would be minus 4 over 3. Now, of course, uh, to get the y value of our turning point, we're going to take that x value, So, which means that's the other turning point. We already have that one, uh, which is at 2 and 0, but we'll, we want the one at b. We already know that the x value is that value that we got minus 4 over 3, right? So we're going to take that uh, and say to get the y value, that's minus 4 over 3, uh, f of minus 4 over 3. So this is going to be minus 4 over 3 cubed uh, minus uh, a negative 4 over 3 squared minus 8 times minus 4 over 3 uh, plus 12. Okay, I'm just going to put that into my calculator quickly. Okay, so I have got uh, uh, 4 over 3. Okay, so negative 4 over 3. So that's cubed. Okay. We are making so many errors here. Uh, cubed, that's minus, again, that's uh, negative 4 over 3. That's squared. That's minus 8 into 4 over 3. Okay. 
Oh no, I almost forgot that negative again. Uh, plus 12. Okay, you can verify that with me, ladies and gents. Um, I get a very strange value. Okay, 18.52 or you can round it off as 500 over 27. Okay, uh, if uh, it is incorrect, please you can correct me on the comments. Uh, 52. So in this case, I've got minus 4 over 3. Uh, which is 18.52 or if you want to um, so this is approximated to that or accurately it's 500 over 27 okay right so it means that the value of uh, b all right would be actually that minus 4 over 3 as well as 18 0.52 and it makes sense it's a positive y value and a negative x value all right now let's go right into it again um, so the second part they said write down the values for which uh, the values of x rather for which f prime x the gradient is greater than zero and we must be very careful here right um, in this case what it simply means is we're going to look at our graph and say, well, where is our uh, gradient greater than zero? Okay, so where is our gradient positive? I want you to please note. So everywhere from infinity, my gradient is positive until B, B is, uh, has a gradient of zero. Then it starts becoming negative, right? And then you can see that it's zero here, but then it starts becoming positive again. Okay, the steepness of the graph starts becoming positive after two, right? So what are the x values where the gradient is positive? It's from negative infinity right up until that turning point, which is minus four over three. And then it's from two to infinity, right? So we can say, well, in this case, this is how we're going to write it out, okay? Uh, we can say x is an element of minus infinity. We never include that uh, up until minus 4 over 3. But do we include it? No. And the reason for that is that, remember, at minus 4 over 3, it's not positive. It's not greater than 0. If they had said greater or equal to, then we would include that value. But at minus 4 over 3, it's 0. But we want only greater than, so we're going to exclude that value. Okay, and uh, in this case, in union with. Okay, so again, we said from 2. Okay, we exclude 2 because at 2, remember, it's uh, 0. And till infinity, right? So till infinity. Of course, you can write that as uh, for values where x is less than uh, minus 4 over 3 and for x greater uh, than 2 okay for any values greater than 2 all right okay uh, the last portion they say for which values of x is the graph concave up right now in this case again how do we work out uh, uh, whether a value is concave up or, or rather where the graph is concave up, it, it means that we need to find the point of inflection, right? So we said, okay, so f of x, remember, this is x cubed, okay, minus x squared minus 8x uh, plus 12. All right, now, first of all, first derivative, this is 3x squared minus 2x minus 8, okay? But for the point of inflection, what do we need? We need the double derivative, right? So this is going to be uh, 6x minus 2, and this is equal to 0. We make the double derivative equal to 0. So it means 6x minus 2 is equal to 0. And so 6x is equal to 2. And if we divide that by 6, okay, so we know this would be at x is equal to 1 over 3. 
Now they were looking for the x values where the graph is concave up, right? Uh, remember that, that was our question. Uh, concave up, remember at the point of inflection, we know uh, you can see there. So it means from one over three, okay? So I mistakenly just deleted that there. Okay, so from one over three, okay? So that was our graph right there, okay? So from one over three, so we know in this case that would be our point of inflection. So it's concave up from one over three right up until infinity. So we can say to answer that, okay, safely, uh, this is X is an element of uh, one over three, okay? Um, in this case, so that's from one over three um, up until uh, infinity, okay? Right, again, we don't include that value at one over three there. All right, and essentially that is how the cookie crumbles. Now, ladies and gents, I know this has been a little bit of a lengthy lesson, but of course it is worth it when it comes to cubic functions. All right, and I want to leave it there. I hope that it's been helpful. All right, and I'll see you guys again next time. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to hit uh, that notification bell. And of course, you can share and like. If you really like this lesson, hit that like button. And also, uh, just on the comment section, tell us if you have enjoyed the lesson. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.